So Aldo is a doctor in ancient philosophy and professor at the Federal University of, I'm probably going to mispronounce it, Sergipe in Brazil. Um, he's been researching Stoicism in general and Epictetus uh, in particular for two decades, publishing translations and papers, both academic and popular in Portuguese and in English. And he is also the leader of a group of, of Stoics in Brazil called Viva Vox. His talk is James Bond, Stockdale, and Epictetian Communitarian Action. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Aldo. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Greg, for the introduction. Well, uh, I'm grat grateful to Modern Stoicism for the opportunity to talk about my research and my views on Stoicism. I'm grateful also to Kai Whiting, with whom I've been discussing communitarian Stoicism for the last three years. Let me put the slides. I will talk today about Stockdale and Epictetian communitarian action. James Bond Stockdale was a fighter pilot of the US Navy and was shot down during a combat tour over Vietnam in 1965. He was captured and became a prisoner of war for almost eight years. And in prison, he was the highest ranking official among his fellow soldiers. And for this reason, he took the role of the leader. Two years before, Stockdale was studying at Stanford, where he met Professor Rene Lander, who introduced him to Epictetus and to Stoicism. Stockdale read and memorized the manual of Epictetus and also studied Epictetus' discourses. These two, along with Xenophon Memorabilia of Socrates, the Iliad and the Odyssey were his bedside books. Stockdale asserts that these studies made a great difference in his life, transforming him completely. As he points out in his Courage on the Fire, I think it was obvious to my close friends and certainly to me that I was a changed man and I have to say a better man for my introduction to philosophy and, and especially to Epictetus." unquote. One of the most important things Stockdale learned from Epictetus is the need to take his role in each situation of life and to act in a communitarian way. I quote, Epictetus drew the same sort of audience Socrates had drawn five year, 500 years earlier, young aristocrats destined for careers in finance, the arts, public service. The best families sent him their best sons in their middle twenties to be told what the good life consisted of, to be disabused of the idea that they deserved to become playboys. The point made it clear that their job was to serve their fellow men." Unquote. In the same book, he presents some Epictetus quotations concerning these issues. I quote, do you, do you not know what life that life is a soldier serves? One must keep guard, another take the field. If you neglect your responsibilities when some severe order is laid upon you, do you not understand to what a pitiful state you bring the army in so far as in you lies? Remember, you are an actor in a drama of such sort as the author chooses. If short, then a short one. If long, then in a long one. If it be his pleasure that you should enact a poor man or a cripple or a ruler, see that you act it well. For this, your, this is your business, to act well the given part, but to choose it belongs to another. If you regard yourself as a man and as a part of some hold, it's fitting for you now to be sick and now to make a voyage and run risks and now to be in want and on occasion to die before your time. Unquote. Choosing these passages, Stockdale underlined two important points of Epictetus' philosophy. The first, the need to play well the role which is appointed to each of us, the first, first and second quotations, and the perception that each of us is part of a totality. Stockdale seems to be totally aware of something that many people who study and try to follow Stoicism today do not pay the due attention. Stoicism is not in, 
an individualistic philosophy, but a communitarian one. If, on the one hand, virtue is enough for happiness, it's impossible, on the other, to be virtuous without benefiting others. That's to say, according to the Stoics, if you are virtuous, you necessarily benefit your community, your country, you benefit humanity in general. As Epictetus puts it, this is not a perverse self-regard for the animal is constituted so as to do all things for itself. For even the sun does all things for itself, even Zeus himself. But when he chooses to be the giver of rain and the giver of fruits and the father of gods and humans, you see that he cannot obtain these functions and these names if he is not useful to humans. And universally, he has made the nature of the rational animal such that it cannot obtain any one of its own proper interests if it does not contribute something to the common interest." Unquote. So, for Epictetus, being virtuous implies contributing to the common interest. In order to achieve this, each of us must understand and play our individual roles in society the roles of son or daughter, father or mother, neighbor, brother or sister, citizen, human being, and also an important part of nature or God. Epictetus says that roles are parts of relations, and that if someone acts adequately concerning them, he understands and plays well his role in this particular relation. I quote uh, Manuel 30, Adequate actions are universally measured by relations. Is a man a father? The precept is to care, to take care of him, to yield to him in all things. But suppose that he is a bad father. Were you then by nature made aching to a good father? No, but to a father. Does a brother wrong you? Maintain then your own position towards him and do not examine what he is doing. But what you must do that your will shall be conformable to nature. In this way, then, you discover your duty from the relation of a neighbor, from that of a citizen, from that of a general, if you are accustomed to contemplate the relations." Unquote. In a nutshell, if you are virtuous, you act in a communitarian way. If you act in a communitarian way, you understand and play well the roles assigned to you. Finally, if you play well and understand your roles, you follow nature, because for Epictetus, these relations are established by nature itself. And Anthony Long summarizes Epictetus' communitarian stoicism as follows. Epictetus argues that our identity is so irreducibly social, both globally and locally, that we cannot achieve our own good unless we see ourselves as integral parts of the world in general and of our society in particular. Hence, while there is such a thing as my interest, it's no more detachable from the communes of which I am a part than my food is detachable from the functions I require it to serve. The implication is that if you isolate your own interests from these social roles, you turn yourself into the equivalent of a detached lamp and therefore cease to be a functioning person with any generally human interests as such." Unquote. These roles and relations ultimately form a web which composes the world, family, city, country, humanity, earth, the whole universe. For the Stoics, the universe is not a bunch of atoms gathered together, but a living being, a system in which humans play an important part. He, quote, he then who has observed with intelligence the administration of the world and has learned that the greatest and supreme and the most comprehensive community is that which is composed of humans and God and that from God have descended the seeds, not only to my father and grandfather, but to all beings which are generated on the earth and are produced, and particularly to rational beings, for these only are by their nature forms to have communion with God, by means, being by means of reason conjoined with him. Why should not 
such a man call himself a citizen of the world? Not, why not a son of God? And why should he be afraid of anything which happens among humans? Unquote. Stockdale deeply understood these tenets of Epictetus' Stoicism and applied them as a prisoner of war in Vietnam. Once in prison, he meditated about the roles attributed to him in that difficult situation. Quote, what is not up to you beyond your power, not subject to your will in the last analysis? For starters, let's take your station in life. As I glide down towards that little town on my short parachute ride, I'm just about to learn how negligible is my control over my station in life. It's not at all up to me. I'm going right now from being the leader of a hundred plus pilots and a thousand men, and goodness knows all sorts of symbolic status and goodwill to being an object of contempt. I will be known as a criminal." Unquote. Stockdale correctly understood that the roles given to us are among things not up to us. They are external and to be counted among the indifferent things which are neither good nor bad, but materials that can be used in a good or in a bad way. As Epictetus states in Manual 13, it belongs to an order to select our roles, but it is our duty playing well on the part that is given to us. In Stockdale's case, his part was as a leader of his companions in prison. Stockdale thought long about what his first orders should be and came to this conclusion. Quote, my orders came out as easy to remember acronyms. The principal one was back us. Don't bow in public, stay off the air, admit no crimes. Never kiss them goodbye. US could be interpreted as United States, but it really means unity over self. Lunars make out in an enemy's prison. So my first rule of togetherness in there was that each of us had to work at the lowest common denominator, never negotiating for himself, but only for all." Unquote. Stockdale's rule of togetherness, US, or unity over self, is in full agreement with Epictetus' philosophy. The commander and his subordinates must in no acts aim at the common good and never act in individualistic or selfish way. To keep and enhance the link among the soldiers, a tap code was created since the Vietnamese tried to destroy the, the, their network. In his book, Thoughts of a Philosophical Pilot, Stockdale reflects upon his experience both as prisoner of war and leader of his companions in Hanoi. He observes that in prison, man's need for his fellows was certainly spotlight in those intense circumstances. We found ourselves overcoming what is often viewed as natural selfishness of man even the survival instinct of men by clinging to ideas like unity of a self and the spirit of other similar axioms of our organization. We learned that the virtues of truthfulness and straightforwardness have their own reward." Unquote. So today we reflect that these virtues have their own reward. That's to say, to have the awareness of being an effective part of a group who fulfills ourselves as humans. In fact, Cicero, an eclect who transmitted to us several reports about Stoic philosophy in antiquity, informs us that according to the Stoics, from the fact that, quote, no one wishes to spend his life in solitude, even with infinity and abundance of pleasures, it's easily understood that we are born for communion, for the congregation and for the, the natural community." Unquote. He adds that the human community has its origin in, a, in the affection created by nature from parents towards their children. 
Stoicism acknowledges that human beings have selfish impulses, but at the same time, their innate tendency to live in community can be enhanced through the study and practice of philosophy. Through this exercise, the Stoics think, the awareness about the urgency of acting unselfishly can be cultivated in human beings. Ultimately, for the Stoics, since humans are naturally fit for social intercourse, association, and civility, acting in a communitarian way is something that interests them, and selfishness is an illusion. Stockdale, in fact, notes that this was the main objective of Petito's teaching, to show his pupils how to overcome selfishness and, consequently, how to act in a communitarian way. Stockdale deeply understood and applied Epictetus philosophy as a leader of the American in Hanoi. He played his role as the commander in the best way possible, preserving and strengthening the sense of comradeship among his soldiers through simple and objective commands, such as his rule of togetherness, US unity over self, and his urge to act aiming at the common good in a communitarian way. That's it. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Aldo, for that presentation. So questions for, for Aldo on this. Uh, there's a lot of rich material here. Um, actually, I mean, I'll, I'll throw one out there right off the bat. It's we don't hear that that much about Stockdale, I think, these days. And you've you've nicely brought him in where he often doesn't get to with all of these these ancient and then you know some modern Stoics. He brought up you know uh, a long and his his reinterpretation. So it it almost seems then this is. I could be completely wrong about this. Like, you know, you get Stockdale and he appeals to military people and people wanting to talk about resilience, toughness, the prison camp experience. And then you've got all these other Stoics over here and you managed to bring them together. Do you see him as somebody who's, you know, uh, not just applying Stoicism, but where it's, it's an integral part of his, his thought, his response, his, his way of living? Yeah, surely, surely. I think he, he's a, a great philosopher also. He's, he, usually he's not valorized, he recognizes as such, right? I, but I think he is. I, I read all his books, and this especially is very good. It is thoughts of yeah. philosophical fighter. Uh, and you, you must read it to understand what, uh, the, 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 uh, how deep he is not only applying, but thinking about Stoicism. Is, 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 he, of course, he's not a scholar, but uh, he's, a, he's a very intelligent, he was a very intelligent person, obviously, and he, de, he did a great job uh, thinking about these, these things, né? and thinking about things that usually many scholars do not pay the due attention, that do not, uh, this uh, communitarian aspect of Stoicism is present everywhere in Stoicism, but Few people pay attention to it. I was uh, think about it. Uh, let, 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 let me show you just one uh, one passage, if uh, if you can, just a moment. I just discovered it the other day. It is Mussolini who he says, if you agree that man's nature most closely resembles the bee that which cannot live alone for it does be left alone, but bends its energies to the one common task of his fellows and toils and works together with his neighbors, which is his soul. And in addition, you recognize that for man, evil consists in injustice and cruelty and indifference to a neighbor's trouble, while virtue is broadly love and goodness and just and beneficence and concern for the welfare of one's neighbor. With such ideas, I say, uh, it would be each man's duty duty to take thought for his own city and to make of his home a rampart for its protection. So uh, it's, it's very present in all 
the text of the historics, but few people paid attention, right? And among yeah. these few people, we, we have Anthony Long and also Stockdale. So Kai has an interesting question here that I think we can turn into two questions. He says, why do you think that cosmopolitanism gets ignored by a lot of contemporary Stoics? So that's one question. And I think, you know, we also don't want to like blur together communitarianism and cosmopolitanism. They are, they're not absolutely separate from each other because if, if we're thinking in terms of the world as our, our city, then that is our community as well. But I mean, is, is there sometimes a tension between being a cosmopolitan and, and focusing on your particular community, you know, your local community? Yeah, uh, as um, the, the concentric circles says, says uh, the, 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 the idea of the concentric circles says, usually our affection is, is stronger with, the, with persons we are next to, to us, right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, and in this, this way, uh, we love more our family or then our neighbor or some, someone who is living in a distant country. But at the same time, uh, philosophy tries to develop this sense of affection, not in the sense of uh, Christian love, but in the sense of comradeship. Uh, in fact, uh, in this book, Stockdale notes that uh, in prison, the most important link among his soldiers was not friendship, but comradeship. He, say, he, he, he quotes uh, Glenn Gray. He has a book uh, titled The Wars, Reflections on Men in Battle. And, and Gray says, friendship is not just a more intense form of comradeship. Is, it's very opposite. While comradeship wants to break down the walls of self, friendship seeks to expand these walls and keep them intact. The one relationship is ecstatic, the other whole individual. Nothing is clear then that men can act contrary to the alleged basic instinct of self-preservation and against all motives of self-interest and egoism. Were not so, the history of our civilization would be completely different than what it has been. So, uh, for uh, cosmopolitanism, we, we must enhance this courageship among humans. And nowadays, it's a very weak feeling, right? Uh, don't, yeah. Usually, pe people from a country do not care if the, the other countries. Uh, people of other country, for example, in Africa, it, it, if it, they are dying of hunger or something like this. So uh, Stoics think philosophy as a way to enhance this correctship among people. You don't, need, you don't need to love the other person to do the best for, for, for him or for her, but you must have this sense of courageship. And once, and once you have it, you you play your, play your role well, and you do, you do the best both for you and for the other people. So there's a question here from Andre, um, and this is about daily life. How can we apply more of this cosmopolitan way of thinking in our daily lives? Yeah, in, in our daily lives, we must play well the roles assigned to us, right? The, the role of a father or, or mother or brother and, and so on. If you play well these roles, you are doing a great job concerning the world in general, right? You are doing a, a, a great thing. It's not easy at all to do all the, these things. They are difficult to do and to, because you have to pay attention. You have to be focused on your work all the time, uh, on your uh, uh, so the things you must do for your, for your son or for, uh, for your sister or for your father, it's not easy to pay attention to each, to be, to be all in these things, right? Usually we are, we are always uh, things about, thinking about other problems or think about ourselves. So uh, you must keep in mind and must think about our roles, individually speaking, and play with them. 
if we are doing this, we are already doing a great job. As you see in the world, it's not, it's not every day that we see a good father, a good mother, a good son, and so on. It looks like there's a lot of discussion in the chat about what words to use for, for all of this. Somebody uh, suggests uh, solidarity. JB says, I oh, wish that, I could call my people comrades. Yeah, go ahead. There, there is a, a, a lecture of Musonius. Uh, the, the lecture, one of the lectures about uh, matrimony, Mat not matrimony, but about. Uh, That's right, matrimony, yeah. Weddings. Matrimony, uh, thanks. <laughs> married and life, he, yeah. He, yeah, married life. And he does not use the word love, he used two words that, that they say they are essential to a good marriage. The first one is symbiosis, comradeship. And the second one is care, caring for each other. So uh, yeah. we must have for Musonius in, in a perfect relation, so to say, these two qualities, comradeship and mutual care. And it's beautiful. It's not so only do you think nowadays. Oh, nowadays, if you talk about love in a romantic way, and they also it's it is egoistic because you think, oh, I love this person. He, he, she's or he's mine. I will not share with anyone. Muson is talking about uh, a totally different kind of relation. Totally different. A relation which is a, a symbiosis, right? You, you have a comradeship and mutual care. And I think it's much more stronger. Than, it's, sorry, I think it's stronger than uh, the romantic love we have nowadays. Longer lasting, perhaps, right? It's got it's got something that it can. Uh, maybe we could talk about resilience of relationships. Um, romantic love is famously ephemeral, uh, whereas <laughs> these other types of relationships are, are much less so. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a remark here from uh, Fielding Isaacs that I, I think could be interesting. Going back to Stockdale, he says military officers are usually looked at only as leaders, but many parts of our work parallel with academia. For example, advising, publishing in the form of writing instructions, research needed to correctly write instructions. So, as an academic, but also as somebody who's reading Stockdale, what do you what do you think of that idea? Mm -hmm. That there's questions think, between military leadership. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think we can apply. So I, I personally, I'm applying it in my, my group of students, and it, it's very helpful. Uh, of course, we don't you don't have the and we, and we don't want to have also the authority of a military leader, right? But we have must have leadership yeah. anyway, right? So uh, I'm applying it all the time, especially this, this, this idea about courageship. If you try to, to make everyone friends, it's difficult, it's impossible, but mm. it's easier and much better to make them comrades. So they work together, they, 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 they make the group grow, right? Exactly. Well, we are just about out of time for this one. Thanks for this, this excellent talk, Aldo. Um,